Alkenes are aliphatic hydrocarbons containing at least one double bond. So not all the carbons need to be connected by double bonds. This is ethene, the smallest alkene. The carbon atoms here have only two hydrogen atoms attached because the other two bonding electrons of the carbon atom are used in the double bond. The double bond means the carbon has the potential to bind to more atoms. In this case, adding hydrogen gas to ethane saturates the carbon atoms to form ethane. Since the carbon atom in ethene is not bonded to the maximum number of atoms, alkenes are called unsaturated hydrocarbons. If the alkane general formula has 2n plus 2 hydrogens, and the difference between alkanes and alkenes is 2 hydrogens, then the general formula for alkenes is CnH2n. Commonly called ethylene, the simplest alkene, ethene, has no other place for the double bond to go. Your book describes how fruit is ripened when it gets to the supermarket. Bananas are picked while quite green and not at all ripe. Turns out that the plant secretes ethene, causing it to naturally ripen. So infusing these bananas with ethene when they reach their destination enables us to buy our fruit and veg with that just picked from the tree feel. Propene, commonly called propylene, is also pretty straightforward. Putting the double bond between carbons 1 and 2 gives the same molecule as putting the double bond between carbons 2 and 3. Butwanine shows the double bond is between carbons 1 and 2, the same molecule if the double bond was between carbons 3 and 4. Butuene shows the double bond is between carbons 2 and 3, a different compound. A structural isomer. Keep adding carbons to the chain and the double bond combinations become greater. The techniques employed for drawing structural diagrams for alkenes is the same as for alkanes. And like the alkanes, the empirical molecular formula gives no indication of where the branch groups are, if there are even any at all. Additionally, for alkenes, the empirical molecular formula gives no indication as to where the double bond is located. Notice how the double bond is indicated in the line structural formula. The naming process is similar to naming alkanes. You have already seen butwanine and can see that there is a reference of the position of the double bond. You might see the naming convention expressed differently in older textbooks. The IUPAC have recently revised their naming rules and we will be using the new rules in this course. So in addition to the naming rules from earlier, include that the suffix for alkenes is ene, and that molecules bigger than propene, the carbon number immediately before the double bond is inserted between hyphens, between the root name and the suffix. For alkanes, the carbon numbering began at the end carbon that would give the branches the lowest possible numbers. For alkenes, Carbon number one is at the end carbon nearest the double bond. It is also important to note that for compounds containing substituent groups, the chain containing the double bond might not be the longest chain, but is always used as the root name when naming it. When drawing alkenes, follow the rules for drawing alkanes, making appropriate adjustments for the position of the double bond. In naming this alkene, we might be tempted to number the carbon atoms like this, the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms with carbon number one on the left to give the branch a low number. However, alkene carbon numbering must include the double bond and should be renumbered like this. The name of the longest chain containing the double bond is non-2-ene. When you include the three carbon alkyl branch on the end, it becomes 3-propyl non-2-ene. The physical properties of alkenes are quite similar to those of alkanes. The fewer atoms means fewer electrons compared to the equivalently sized alkane, which means the boiling points for alkenes is a little lower. The position of the double bond also contributes to boiling and melting point variations even among alkenes with the same number of carbon atoms.